Hello everyone, I am back with a second uh, capstone project proposal. I'm going to take about 10 to 12 minutes here to introduce you to my project and I've already made a fair bit of project, a uh, fair bit of progress through the project so I'm going to show you where I'm at and what I've gotten done so far. Uh, this second project of mine is going to be for a precision motor control loop. It is a stepper motor and I'm going to develop the uh, driver circuit uh, I've already designed that in P-SPICE. I'll show you that in just a second here in the slides. And I have a feedback loop on it for exact position uh, feedback. And then I'm going to have a microcontroller um, do something with that feedback and uh, control the vacuum variable capacitor from my previous project. So this project builds on my previous one by adding some automation to the tuning aspect of the antenna that I built. So I'm basically adding a... Um, motor control loop to remotely tune that capacitor. Uh, so especially if you're transmitting with an antenna like that, um, there are RF uh, safety concerns. You don't want to be too close to that. Even, uh, even if you're transmitting at five watts or lower, it can still be dangerous. And so not only does a motor control assembly to tune that capacitor uh, make the antenna easier to use, but it also makes it safer. So without further ado, I'm going to get into my uh, slides here and show you the, uh, let's see here. All right, so here's where I'm at on the project. Uh, I already put the slides together quite a while ago and uh, sent those over, but I re-recorded this video because I didn't like how the audio came out in the previous one. So that's why you're seeing the uh, proposal and a bit of a progress update combined here at the same time. Um, I've already completed the CAD design for my project, and I, de I designed my own circuit uh, in P-SPICE, and I, did not I didn't need anyone else's reference circuits to build off of, just kind of basing my knowledge off of how stepper motors work, uh, how BJT transistors work, and uh, the digital input and output pins of an Arduino, just kind of building off of all the experience I've uh, accumulated so far to come up with my own circuit. And I'll show you that here um, pretty soon. I also used Mouser, uh, the electronics distributor online, to go ahead and put together a bill of materials and get the piece parts ordered. So that's already completed. I've already 3D printed the uh, components and I've started uh, putting the whole assembly together. I have not yet prototyped the circuit because I just got the um, components in yesterday. Um, but that's kind of the next thing I have to do, uh, but I'm getting this recorded for you guys now. So by the time you're watching this video, I will probably have already prototyped the circuit and I will begin writing the microcontroller code. Uh, so the, the basis of this project is that I'm taking a stepper motor, uh, that has a, it's basically four phase. Uh, so it's got windings in it that are, that have four different phases inside, uh, connected to a bunch of poles inside there particular motor that I have has an eight degree increment per step. And then, um, so the, the idea here is that a user can allow uh, a selection of a specific target capacitance value or dial through like a little rotary encoder that I'll attach. Uh, and then I'll have a long cord running out to the antenna so that you can be fairly far away from the antenna when tuning this thing. You don't have to be right up on it. And then of course some, uh, some circuitry will have to be uh, soldered up and put together to control the motor because the uh, motor requires much higher voltages than the Arduino can handle and currents. So I'm going to have to use some uh, transistors to uh, you know, not pull so much heat from the uh, Arduino's uh, output pins because it, it just can't handle that. So here's what you're looking at with stepper motors for any of you uh, who may not be uh, familiar with how a stepper motor works. It's got a number of poles on the inside, and that's uh, it's entirely up to the manufacturer of the motor. You can get some that are very precise and have a low step angle, a very low uh, step angle with a lot more poles in it. Uh, the step angle for the motor I've chosen is about 8 degrees, and uh, it's a four-phase one. And the circuit you see here is actually uh, pretty accurate to how I'm going to be driving it there. With the, You see those transistors connected to uh, coil A, B, C, and D. Uh, this is the CAD work I completed for this design, and I'm about to show you how that came out in, in real life. It actually uh, turned out a lot like what you see uh, here on paper. Um, the transparent object you see um, to the right there is actually uh, an analog of the uh, vacuum variable capacitor you saw in my previous project, the magnetic loop antenna. 
So this assembly is designed to connect up to that and tune that capacitor um, remotely. And so here's kind of a block diagram that's telling you what's going on uh, with this assembly. So what you've got there is you've got the stepper motor that I've been mentioning. In between the capacitor and the stepper motor, I've got a couple of things. I've got a ball screw, or what is also called a lead screw. Um, and it's got a nut on it, uh, or like a little, and it's got some pillow block bearings on the left and right so that the, the, the lead screw can spin freely. And then of course it's got a little nut that moves in a, in, in a linear motion as that as the rotation occurs, that nut moves left and right. And connected to that nut is the is a linear uh, 10K potentiometer. So depending on the resistance value that comes back from that 10K potentiometer, I'm going to use that resistance value along with a voltage divider to get the feedback so that I know uh, where the motor's at. Um, and there's a couple different ways to get feedback from stepper motors, but this is the approach I wanted to take. It was the part that was, it, you know, it was just the way that was going to be funnest for me since we had a little bit of flexibility in, in how we want to tackle our designs. So that's what I wanted to do. And uh, Here's the uh, circuit I designed in piece mice. Uh, it looks like a lot is going on here, but that's just because I did the, uh, I just did, I've got the flags pulled up for um, your current and your uh, power dissipation because uh, what I wanted to do is use piece spice to help me select the appropriate uh, transistors so that, because uh, the, the stepper motor is 24 volts and it can draw up to one amp. Uh, per phase. So it's actually pulling quite a bit of wattage uh, there and I wanted to make sure that the transistors I selected when I went shopping for those would be able to handle that and so I wanted to do that analysis in piece by before buying, uh, before going out and buying uh, any components. Uh, so like I said the stepper motor is actually a 24 volt stepper motor um, but I'm going to drive it with a uh, I may drive it with a, just a 12 volt supply and uh, bump up the amperage uh, a little bit uh, because and the, and the reason I want to do that is if I give a 12 volt supply on that same circuit board that I make the uh, motor driver circuit I can also just do a little voltage divider with some high wattage resistors uh, to to basically make a second supply source for the Arduino and drop that down to five or six volts so that the voltage regulator on the so that the voltage regulator on the Arduino doesn't get too hot um, and these uh, sources down here uh, where, you, where you see the 5.4 volts in the bottom left corner, those are just representing the uh, output, the digital output pins of the Arduino driving those transistors each of those phases. So I'm going to have to set up the timing appropriately to get the uh, the speed and consistency that I'd like to see out of this motor. So I, not only do I have to uh, solder up the circuit together and, and, and function check it and make sure everything's working, but then I've also got to go and write some code. Uh, there might be some libraries already out there to save me a little bit of time for uh, driving stepper motors, but um, I'm, I'm also going to be taking into account that feedback because I don't want to drive that nut past um, past the pillow blocks or do any damage, you know. So I want to make this um, capacitor tuning assembly smart so it doesn't damage itself or go too far in either direction. So here's the concept of the feedback there. You're seeing the um, linear 10K potentiometer uh, that's going to be connected to the nut on a, um, on a lead screw. And uh, as the, as the, uh, nut on that, as the uh, lead screw turns, the nut's going to move back and forth. And then I'll, I have a little 3D printed assembly here that connects the two to slide that potentiometer up and down. Uh, and then, of course, you'll, just, you'll see that you know, implemented in the form of a voltage divider. And that's, that's how I'm going to get my feedback on linear position. So this was, um, there was a few more things to my bill of materials than what you're seeing here. These are just the things I ordered from Mouser, but those of you who have never taken the time to go play around with Mouser or DigiKey, they have really handy uh, project management tools and you can name a project and you can add components to it and then you can generate an Excel sheet as a, uh, bill of materials and you know you can total up your costs and then you can if you wanted to you can compare a bill of materials from more than one distributor just to see if it's going to be cheaper from uh, between one distributor than another if you're trying to keep your costs down uh, total for me I think including the stepper motor uh, and the uh, lead screw that you the lead screw assembly that you see there 
um, in all these parts here from Mouser, I think I was around 50 US dollars. So the project was about 50 US dollars. Um, and I think the everything I, I you know, I, I bought US only stock so that the parts arrived in time to complete my project when it would need to be. That's all there is to say on the bill of materials. Here's the 3D printed parts uh, from that CAD design I showed you earlier. Um, Let's flip back up to that right quick. So there's the CAD design. I actually did this in a direct modeling uh, application similar to Fusion 360 from AutoCAD, but it's actually called uh, Space Claim uh, by Ansys. It's a really uh, easy to use modeling software that you can pick up in just a few days and, and start turning out assemblies like this. Um, just so it's kind of like independent study there for, for getting the CAD work done. And so there's the 3D printed parts that came uh, that turned out as a result of that and then throw a little bit of hardware on there to assemble some of it here. And I'll show you right now. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to uh, video and uh, show you this um, camera assembly here and how it turned out. Or, I'm sorry to show you this uh, motor tuning assembly here, how it turned out. So you have the 3D printed parts I showed you on screen there, but here they are all assembled. And uh, as this motor rotates, this is the nut that I told you that would slide uh, back and forth and um, basically actuate that linear 10K potentiometer. So depending on where this uh, motor, how many revolutions of this motor has been completed, that nut that you see traveling left and right here is uh, what's going to tune that uh, circuit or basically give feedback for the position the linear position of this nut so based on its linear position I'll have a different resistance value from a, a, a 10k potentiometer and I just got these in the mail here so go ahead and see if I even ordered the right thing I hope so this looks like it's probably the the uh, 10k pot with all that padding Yeah, there that is. So there's this uh, 10K potentiometer that I'm going to use in that circuit. And uh, its resistance value basically varies between its actual position. And, and how I was able to um, model this uh, assembly without having all the parts in hand is I just used the data sheets. Uh, the data sheets are very good about providing uh, dimensioning data, including like the spacing of the holes on this thing and everything like that. Uh, I can't guarantee it'll be a perfect fit, but I guess you'll see it here with me together. See if that fits. I just went off the dimensions of the uh, of the data sheet there, so there might be some refinements to my prototype here that would be necessary. It looks like it'll be. It looks like it will fit. Um, I'm just gonna have a hard time doing this while holding it on screen for you here, but I'll definitely. Um, there's a. I've got like a little holder assembly that that 10k pot drops down into and then this thing will uh this is what basically actuates that and grabs that to slide it left and right so once i get that all put together this is going to be my um feedback circuit here that i'll use to uh get linear position for the uh linear position for the um for the motor and then of course i've got to uh solder up and uh prototype the circuit to drive this motor here because the uh, Arduino cannot handle the voltage and current that this thing is going to demand to be able to provide the torque it needs to provide to drop, to uh, tune that uh, vacuum variable capacitor. So this is about as far as I've gotten with the assembly. I basically got my parts 3D designed and 3D printed and I uh, got it mostly assembled here, a little bit more to go to get this guy fixed in place here and get these connected up and contacting each other. And then once I do that, I can start uh, prototyping my circuit and programming my uh, microcontroller to do something with the uh, feedback. Yep, so there again uh, was the uh, 3D printed parts that I just showed you uh, in the assembly here. And this is what I'm going to do for uh, user input. I've already got a rotary encoder laying around. I think I'm going to grab that and use that. Uh, in addition to like maybe a little display so that you can see what uh, capacitance value you're selecting as you're rotating this thing and uh, maybe develop a, a little simple user interface uh, to just make tuning that capacitor a little bit easier. 
Um, so that'll be the uh, input. Uh, of course, the microcontroller will then use the circuit I solder up to drive the motor and to measure that feedback to make sure it's driving the motor to the correct position. Uh, this is the display I mentioned that I might use. It's something I had from a previous project, also used in uh, one of my uh, EET projects a couple of semesters ago for a um, plant monitoring system. So I still have that display. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to reuse that uh, so that I can you know throw up some values for the capacitor on there as you're tuning it, so you can see what you're tuning it to. Uh, so the scope of the project, uh, just to kind of recap some of this, a rotary encoder will allow for adjustment of a stepper motor. Uh, the user input will be limited to serial input, uh, so I can do either keyboard or that rotary encoder if I have time. And then several parts will be 3D printed. I already showed you that I got that far. And then I'm going to also print a 3D print an enclosure for my electronics. So once I get everything soldered up and put together, I'll be able to put that inside an enclosure. And uh, the capacitor that this assembly is going to be tuning uh, was, again, I'm building upon a previous project, my magnetic loop antenna. So now I'm just kind of automating the uh, tuning of that antenna. And uh, I mentioned that that can be accomplished remotely to ensure a safe distance from a tra transmitting antenna can be maintained. And again, uh, you know, one last time, here's where I'm at. Uh, the next few things I have to do are prototyping the circuit and begin writing the code uh, for my microcontroller. So I just wanted to thank you guys for um, tuning in to uh, my project. And um, if you've got any questions at all or you'd like to know or if you've got any feedback for me on what else I might be able to add into this project to make it a little bit more interesting or a little bit more challenging, I'd be happy to hear from you. Um, and I'll provide a weekly update next time. So thank you very much. Bye.